Hey everybody, it's Angie, also known as The Light. Welcome to my channel. I know, I know, it's been a few weeks. I've been missing in action. Uh, I just have a lot going on right now. Um, just been tired from work. And then I went to Chicago for a week. I just got back yesterday. My first time going to Chicago was very interesting. I don't know, do I have any, any friends out there that are um, from Chicago? Um, holla at me in the comment section. Um, I, I like Chicago. Chicago was cool. I went to the hood. <laughs> I was downtown. So I saw both sides of Chicago, the wealthy and, you know, the unfortunate really. And it was great. And it was beautiful people everywhere. And, um, I enjoyed it. You know, it was a lot of life lessons there. While I was in Chicago, I was in a plus size fashion show. So that was cool. My first time walking a runway and I learned that I really don't want to do runway. It's hard work changing your clothes in front of a whole bunch of women and um you know getting ready in 2 minutes, okay, and running out there. I would say that that's definitely not the kind of modeling that I want to do. I think I would just rather just do print you know, just be in magazines or, um, you know, just doing, uh, uh, for photography for, you know, websites and stuff like that. That's something that I would personally want to do instead. I really wouldn't want to be a runway model. Okay. But anyway, um, Chicago was nice. Chicago was good to me. It was cold. I got off the plane last night. I was just like, thank God it's warm in New York because it feels like winter in Chicago. But it was weird because when I got there, I was walking around with no coat on and then boom, the weather just switched so fast. So I, I really don't want to be in Chicago when it's winter time because if this is what fall feels like, uh-uh, no, 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 pretty much. So I stayed with a friend in Chicago, <clears throat> but... I think next time I'm going to stay in a hotel downtown because I really think I I think I spent about $200 in Ubers. Yes, they do have buses and trains in Chicago, but it, it, it would have took too long just to kind of go here, go there, go everywhere. And I was just like, I don't know the train. My friend was always at work. I was traveling by myself. So I think I spent about 200 bucks in Ubers and that was insane. So... Next time, I will just stay in a hotel that's downtown, closer to everything, so it'll be cheaper for me to travel. Um, and I probably will fly out of Midway Airport, I believe, and not O'Hare, because it was just so far out there. But overall, the pizza was good. Everyone kept asking me about, um, oh, do you like New York-style pizza or Chicago pizza, deep dish? Listen... Yes, everybody loves a New York slice, but if you want deep dish, I'm going to say Chicago hands down has a better, has the better deep dish. So there you go. Chicago's deep dish is bomb. You know, it's so good. And then New York slice, you know, thin slice pizza is excellent. So you really can't compare. It's so different. It depends on what you're into. And that has been a huge, huge argument. Okay. I didn't try the hot dogs because I don't eat hot dogs. I did get Garrett's popcorn, which was so delicious, but it's so sweet, so I left a huge bag with my friend. But I, I mean, um, New York, Chicago was awesome. It kind of reminded me of New York. But then when I was in, like, the ghetto, so to say, I mean, it was a little depressing seeing so many abandoned buildings, so many properties that people lost. That was really depressing. So I guess I came back from my trip feeling grateful and I was like you know what let me get on and talk to you guys because I really miss talking to you sorry to those who this is probably the first video you're watching on my channel you gotta catch up I'm like I treat y'all like friends so this is why I'm telling you my business in the beginning of the video please stop what you're doing and like this video the more likes I get the more exposure I get um subscribe to this channel you will not regret it um, and share if you like as well. So, I want to talk about today, oh, yes, to those who want to donate to my channel, I have a PayPal account, and I have, um, Cash App, and the information will be in the description bar, 
or you can scroll through the comments and you will see I have the links to how you um, donate to me. Some people just want to donate to me to keep my channel going. Um, some people want to donate to me because they want me to do a personal video for them. So when you donate to me, I will email you and you tell me the topic that you want or, um, you know, kind of like a council thing. And I respond to you in your own video. Of course, the more you send me, the longer your video and more in-depth your video would be. You can go through my channel and see other people have um, donated to me and I had did their video responses and they loved it, okay? So, I want to talk today about, I want to talk about um, how the narc, how narcs are chameleons, okay? And how their voice suddenly becomes your voice, okay? And I, I don't know, I was thinking about this because I started thinking about how, you know, when I was around many, many narcs, I track narcissists still, but, you know, they flee once they see I have boundaries. But I was um, thinking about how the narc gets you to approve of them, gets you so comfortable, and their voice becomes your voice. So when you're not even thinking anymore, you're not even making decisions on your own. And this has happened to me multiple times, you know, and even me being, I always say that I'm a Leo and we're strong head and we're fire sign and we're leaders and this and that, you know, eventually I did break free from narcs who were trying to become my own voice, okay? Now, this is scary and this is dangerous when the narc becomes, becomes your voice because when you are making decisions in your life, you know, financially, spiritually, emotionally, um, you will tend to reason with yourself, okay, and or you you will tend to even reason with the creator. You will be, you know, you're you have that dark side, you have that light side, and what with the when you when you have the narc's voice in your mind making the decisions for you, that can be very dangerous because why the narc is always going to steer you where into the ditch. They're going to drive you right into the ditch and not going to give you um, advice um, or, you know, motivation or push or the right answer to make your life better, make your situations better. They always tell you the opposite, okay, because they want to see your downfall. Now, okay, how they do this, you know, yes, like I always say, I don't just look at um narcissism as just a mental illness narcissism is a spiritual attack on these individuals through the things that they went through when they were um growing up um but they say narcs are created they're not born okay so basically the narc you can be an intelligent person all right you're you're intelligent you can have a degree there's people out there who have degrees who is swindled by by narc so don't think just because you have a PhD, okay, uh, you're a doctor that you can't be swindled by a narc. Yes, because these narcs have these highly sophisticated spirits that are on them that are helping. It's a team. Spirituality is teamwork. You just don't have God. God has angels. God, you know, has all these different kind of workers. They have he has us. We have light workers. You know, it's a team. And in the dark world, and with these dark spirits, there is a team. As well, it's not just Satan. It's all different kind of demons and spirits and all kind of things that's working to battle against our psyche, whether you're of light or whether you're of darkness, okay? So basically, narcs, they have been studying you and they have been watching you, okay? And they also have these, these spirits that feed them information. Or, hey, you can have a narc that maybe Google things. But when you're getting to know the narc, the narc is studying you. They're listening to what you like, what you dislike. So when they're getting, they're collecting all this information, they're seeing what's important to you. And they use what's important to you to will you in, okay? So you're most likely to trust somebody who you think thinks like you, likes the same things that you like, you know, um, who you can relate to. We all, our ultimate 
goal is to find someone, friendship or love, who we can relate to, who likes the same things that we like, who have things in common. So, narcs, these spirit, these demon-filled people, they know that's what we desire. So, they take what we desire and they use it against us, okay? So, um, spirituality is major to me and this is something that most narcs use or try to use against me or to latch me in and their voice became my voice, okay? Um, so, like, for a big example, my grandmother, okay? My grandmother was a big-time narc, okay? Overt narc, my father's mom. And um, she knew that spiritualism, religion, was major. So when she was living, I was religious, and she would always play you know, that she had this connection with God, okay? And a lot of narcs do this. And they always make it seem as if they have this special gift. They're chosen and God is talking directly to them all the time. And they know what's best. And also, because I grew up in a religious home and you read the Bible, honor thy mother and thy father, okay? <laughs> so your days will be long, okay? So this is something that I always play. So religion had a, this is one of the reasons why I had to let go of religion because I felt it played a huge part in me um, staying back, you know, from growing as a person, okay? For some of you, it may be great. It may actually be a good thing. It may, it may work for you. Um, but anyway, so she was the religious overt narc, and she pretended to be this wise old lady, and she used that, that fake wisdom, that fake spiritualism, that fake religious cover-up to become my voice, okay? To the point where I wouldn't even think for myself anymore. Whenever I was in a situation with a guy or a friend or at work or anything, you know, I, would, I wouldn't think for myself. I wouldn't even pray to God. I would go straight home and go to the narc grandmother and be like, oh, grandma, this happened, blah, 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 what should I do? Or I would tell her something and um, it was as if I needed her approval. You also gonna tend to find yourself that you need the narc's approval. They don't give you approval. They don't give you validation, and when they do, it's fake. It's false. Okay. So this went on for years, like a good seven years. This went on for. So one day I realized this woman ain't wise at all. She's faking this shit the whole entire time. So one day we were talking about um like seeing spirits and seeing like ghosts and things like that and I've seen those things in my in my time and I remember um telling her a story about when I saw a particular spirit and she was so shaken up she was just like okay shut up don't talk about it anymore but this is supposed to be a person who pretended that she had seen those things and she has she's such a wise spiritual person like if you really are a believer in god and you know you're religious you should know that there's light and dark and there's demons and there's 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 warriors of light so why would you be scared of that and i found her to finally sometimes you understand the narc will slip up so i found this narc she eventually slipped up she was supposed to play it off and be like, oh, yeah, I believe you. Yeah, there's plenty of spirits or something like that. That's something that she she should have um, pretended. But you got to understand that eventually the narc's mask slips. And that's when I realized this woman doesn't know much. And then I would start to question her about certain things that I knew about spiritual warfare. She couldn't answer, Okay. And I said, wow, all this time, this is me thinking, and I'm like, wow, all this time, she's been pretending. You know, I've had people fake, literally fake spiritualism, have the same stories on replay, okay? Never been through anything spiritual, you know, and this is what the narc would do. They pretend to be who 
you think you want them to be, okay? They pretend to be you. They pretend to like the things that you like in order to latch you on. And that's when I started to break away when I realized, wait a minute, this woman has been freaking pretending, faking, all that. I even had a narc come out straight up and tell me I'm a chameleon. Sometimes you'll have these demons and these spirits and these people actually talk directly to you. They're not the person. It, it actually the spirit's talking to you. I remember asking, you know, I was asking this narc, it was a, it was a male narc, and um, he was extremely quiet around me. And I said, why are you so quiet? I said, um, what happened? You can't figure me out anymore? And he said, um, no, I'm just shifting gears because I'm a chameleon. I'm shifting towards who you are now. And I just looked at him like, whoa, you got to understand, sometimes these spirits will directly speak to you, okay? And that's what they do. They'll shift gears and they become these chameleons. They become exactly who you, who you desire, okay? This is why it's very important to just not spill all the beans, not tell when you meet somebody to tell them all your desires and things like that. And sometimes even if you don't talk, they'll watch you. They'll watch your social media, they'll watch, you know, the shows that you're watching, the music you're listening to, the people you're around, the activities that you're involved in, and they'll create this avatar, they create these characters to become exactly what you desire. Um, and they play it well, so don't feel bad, like, dang, how did they capture me? That's how they captured you. They basically create all these different characters specifically for all these different individuals, okay? So they could be one way with you, and then when they're with Susan and John and Megan, they're completely somebody else. And it's very scary to see when you see a narc around their other friends and family. You're going to sit back and be like, what the hell? completely different i'm a more chill person so i have seen narcs be religious or spiritual and quiet very quiet i'm, I'm pretty silent unless i'm drinking or unless i'm partying and i don't really turn up like that i'm more of a mellow person so i've seen narcs be real real mellow with me and then they'll invite me to a party with their other friends and they're like sniffing coke not really sniffing coke but they're like turning up they're swinging from the chandelier, and you're looking like, who the hell is this person? They're chameleons. They'll switch quickly. They'll change skin within a second, okay? So don't feel bad that, you know, you got bamboozled. You got swindled by an arc. This is how they did it. They took that information that you gave them. They watched your social media. They watched who you hang out with. They talked to your friends and their family. And they created this character, okay? They pretended to like the things that you like. And eventually, you loved them, you trusted them, and you no longer thought for yourself anymore. They became your voice. You, you just completely threw out... Um, your own, your own, um, your own thought pattern, your own uh, belief system. They break all of that down because you gotta understand. Once the person breaks down your own um, individuality, they got you. That's how they control you. You no longer thank you for yourself. And that's how the world. That's how the government does it. <laughs> that's how these presidents do it. Okay. People are lazy, they don't pay attention, they don't think for themselves, and, and this is the same system that these spirits on these narcs do, okay? So hopefully that helps you and that keeps you guarded to not tell all your information, to pay attention, because you will pay attention, if you pay attention, you'll see the way this narc is speaking and the way the narc is living doesn't mat match up. I know you're going, well, how will I know? That's how you'll know. Their life never matches up. They slip up eventually. How are you so wise? How are you so spiritual, but you don't live a wise and spiritual life? That's what you have to do. You have to pay attention. Eventually, there's no consistency. All right? There, there won't be any consistency. 
and they also tell the same stories over and over again as if there's a freaking record player in their minds, okay? That's something I noticed. And they do it by verbatim. Like, I mean, I heard Knox tell me tell stories, and it's like you hear them tell the same story to someone else, and they say it in the same exact way. That's not really natural or normal, I think. Someone's going to switch up something in the story or change up words, you know, keep the story, but switch up something. No, it's almost as if they just switch something on and they tell the same exact story the same way. But that's how you catch a narc. You have to listen to what they're saying, but then look at the fruits of their labor. Does it match? Does their lifestyle match their words? That's how you catch them. That's how players, you know, you don't got to be a narc, but that's how players get the girls or get the guys, okay? They're just taking things that you like, and they're pretending to be what you truly desire, okay? So that's how you catch the narc. You look at their life, and you listen to their words, and they never match. They don't really have much information. You can tell when somebody is talking to you, and they know because they know that they know, they've been through it, they've been through certain experiences, and then you can tell when somebody is faking the funk. If you can't, then you need not to hang out with nobody until you can have that sense of discernment. But you can tell, if you are really proficient in a, a subject, in an area in your life, ask questions. If they can't answer those questions and they're pretending to be experts in that area... You, you got a knock around you. You got a fake person around you. You definitely got a manipulator around you that's trying to swindle you, okay? And um, don't get me wrong. Some, some people would probably say, well, there's some narcs that know a lot. Yeah, they, they know some. They don't know everything, okay? But even if they do, they Googled it or they studied it in a textbook, you will see that what they're preaching, their life never matches up. If you do investigation, if you spend more quality time with these narcs, you will notice that it doesn't match up. And eventually, the narc's mask always falls off, like I keep saying, repeating myself. Okay, guys, hopefully this information will be helpful for you. I know it was kind of short, but it was something that um, I thought about how they're such chameleonaires and they're such bullshitters. And now that I'm aware of narcs, I sit back and be like, that's got to be a narc. They don't even know what the hell they're talking about. They, now when you, now that you know about narcissism, it's kind of easy to point them out. You'd be like, hmm. Or even after like maybe three months, you start putting all the, the puzzle pieces together and it does not fit. It does not match up. It's not adding up. And that's just something that I've noticed um, now. But before... Because you're, you desire to meet the perfect friend, the perfect lover, or you desire to have that dad or that mom or that grandma or that grandfather to go to, you believe they're bullshit, you know? So, put that out. You don't need a guru. You don't need um, a role model to always go to some, you know, you can be your own. You know, uh, and just you and a creator is good enough. It's okay to go to people for advice, but don't put people on a pedestal, especially when their life is not matching up to the words that they're preaching, the words that they're speaking. It does not add up. But quickly before I go, I want to tell y'all a story. <laughs> so at my job, <clears throat> I work in customer service, and um, so there's a, there's a... Um, She's not even a manager. She's like a head cashier <laughs> in the store that I work in. So I work in the customer service department. So I don't really see her that much. So I came into work one day. And um, one of the cashiers at my job, she comes up to me and she's like, oh, I had to call corporate on so-and-so. Now, I already have pinned out like this was the narc at work because of her, um, the way she spoke to people. Now, she never tests test me yet, okay? I've only been there like three or four months, going on four months now. Actually, no, three months now I've been working there. And um, she has not tested me yet. And thank God she hasn't. 
Um, I've spoken to her before because she's coming to my department to do certain things, but, you know, I don't work with her daily. But I knew about her because her mouth was reckless. This is an overt type of narcissist. So the cashier girl, she comes to me, she's like, oh, I had to call corporate on such and such because she belittled me in front of the workers and, and customers. So basically this narc, <laughs> and I mention it this because a lot of you always talk about the narcs at the job. So this narc, she, um, she basically, oh, the girl had on black sneakers at work. We're supposed to wear like semi casual was it casual um dressy casual at work so you're supposed to wear like if you do wear a sneaker it has to be all black no name and or if not you have to wear a dress shoe you know a flat shoe casual type of shoe so this girl because she has a foot problem and she has a doctor's a doctor's note for it she had on like black new balances or pumas or something like that and you can see the logo on it. So in front of other cashiers and customers, the narc says, Why do you have on sneakers? You need to just leave. Everyone and the girl says she turned red. The girl says she wanted to cry. You know, this is the shit that narcs do. I'm telling you, you know, they know who to pick. So I guess she... This girl play ball. And this is what I was trying to say to you guys who have narcs at your job. Call corporate if you can. So she called corporate on the woman. She called corporate on the narc. And guess what, guys? It worked. The narc didn't get fired, but she has one more chance. It doesn't have to be that particular employee. If one more employee reports her to corporate or reports her... Um, if a customer even reports her, she's fired and she's been working there for 10 years. So if, if, if I'm telling y'all this story because you can play hardball against the narc, she did not curse the narc back. She didn't even go to the store manager. She went straight to corporate. Okay. So if you have a setup like that, you can go to human resources and report them and make sure that it will be anonymous because she was able to do it anonymously. Um, they did have to report it to the store manager, of course. Um, but baby, this narc, she's sweet as pie right now. Sweet as pie, okay? She is, hi, do you need anything? Can I help you? Okay, just make sure you clock out on time today. Sweet as pie being helpful and everything, okay? So, let me tell you something. A lot of narcs are cowards, and they don't stop because they don't get put in their place. So, you have a narc at your job, report their ass to corporate anonymously, report them to human resources, catch them on video, do whatever you can, gang up with your co-workers, and take that narc down, okay? So, yes. I, I thought it was the funniest thing. Everyone is just like, oh my goodness, you see how nice she has been. She's on point, you know, and no one wants that energy. Everyone's loving the new energy around that narc now, you know. So I just thought it was funny. I'll just share that with y'all. Don't act like you're helpless. You can't do anything. You know, if you can't find a new job, there are other ways that you can fight against the narc. So I will be talking to you soon, guys, and I'll be looking forward to your stories in the comments. Peace and blessings.